So we need immunotherapy, right? You ask me, right? I ask myself too, right? You know why we need immunotherapy? Because every school is a, a silo. It's a silo, okay? They do their own thing, their, their own lingo, their own technique, okay? But no single therapeutic modality can meet all the needs of all the people. There's no such thing as one size for all. It's not possible. It's not possible, right? If you have a hammer, you treat everything as a nail. If you have a screwdriver, <laughs> you treat everything as a nail too. I mean. so, so, now, let me show you here. Let this picture. Uh, I just got trip here, it's dangerous here. Everything is dangerous. There isn't a safe place anymore. <laughs> this world is a dangerous place. Are you tripping my in this room? I hurt my leg. No, I, I walk like this. <laughs> okay. Look at that. People are complicated, okay? You should be simpler, but not getting more complicated. Okay. Uh, these are all you. These are all you. These are all you. Now here, you are experiencing something, right? Your sensory perception, uh, your phenomenological experience, the humanistic psychology, like I talk about. Phenomenological experience. This is the experience is a real thing, okay? But not so fast, okay? Here's the narrative self. You all have a story to live by. You all have a story to live by. Now, if you're in your story, if you are a victim, everybody pick on me. Poor me, nobody likes me. I'm a little Chinese in Canada. Nobody likes me. You have a victim mentality. So that will affect my core belief. My core belief will tell me that, oh, I'm a useless, loveless person, right? So that will generate automatic thoughts. So, so you. To do it properly, you have to use techniques for narrative therapy to say, well, the problem is not you. You are not a problem. The problem does not define you, but how you respond to your problem defines you, right? The last thing to learn from narrative therapy. Okay. 